Um, it's really my honor to welcome Dr. Nan Schaefer and Karen Dixon to present the next award to Tracy Bing. Please. The next media mogul <laughs> went to the back of this fine establishment, and there, sitting at a booth, was Tracy Bain. Her head rose just above the table. <laughs> just overwhelmed by humility and reverence for this individual. So I couldn't be prouder to give this award to my friend, longtime companion, Tracy. The fun news is that in the, about a year off of a massive concussion, which means that I have a filter, but I often don't choose to use it as much. <laughs> I'm also from Puerto Rico. I like to tell stories. I'm also a frustrated preacher, but I won't go there tonight. Um, as Nan said, we, we were, we were both overwhelmed. Um, we just stood in the hall and welled up with tears and couldn't speak at the, um, the gravity, the weight of how could you possibly, in the two minutes they told me I had, which well, that's not going to happen, <laughs> possibly do justice to Tracy Bang. How could anyone do justice to Julio or to, or to Benin in that time? So we're ignoring it. You know, it, well, if there's anybody here who doesn't know what Tracy's done, then see me you out know, afterwards and I will tell you. Because I don't want to talk about, you know, I, mean, I, I couldn't possibly list, even if I had a memory, I couldn't list all the things that she's done and the ways that she's led this community. She is a relentless, fearless catalyst. She is the epitome of a leader. And in a world in, 
albeit our community, where it's replete with self-aggrandizing and self-appointed leaders. Julio, Nina, and Tracy stand out because they exemplify leadership in its truest sense. They led from the trenches, not from the fucking stage. And I'm so excited about tonight because even though for decades their leadership wasn't recognized, it must and is finally being celebrated and an inaugural event. And I think that rocks and I thank Australia. Well done. And the reason it's got to be celebrated is because it's pure. Tracy doesn't lead, Renee didn't lead, who didn't lead as an end to itself. They led because they could still hear the cries of the people that are living on the margins of our mainstream, uh, of the margins of society that the mainstream folks in the A days choose to ignore. They could hear those voices. They stepped up. That's leadership. That's what we need more of. And the other thing that all three of them have done, and I know, and, and they build coalitions. They collaborate with the people who may have been past foes, as well as friends that come and go from time to time. But they build the coalitions to move us all forward. And Tracy, you know, in everything you do, whether it's the editorial, the headline, why don't we organize the games in Chicago? How about a march at Springfield? And, and what I am, I am so in awe of and so excited about is the summit that happened two weeks ago in this city. The city with the big shoulders. The first summit on LGBTQ homeless youth that thought to ask the kids what they might need. Now, someday, there'll be a, a book written about the, uh, I don't know, the fight for marriage equality, civil rights, front lines of the civil rights movement as it involves our community, and maybe it should be called Comes the Dawn, because who would have thought a simple ask of asking a homeless kid, what do you need, would yield a dentist? I don't have any place to put my stuff when I go. Try to interview for a job. Mm -hmm. More to the point, I have to show up at the shelter at 6 p.m. to sign in mm -hmm. when that's the time I'm most likely to be able to find employment. And we're not done. And I know I can just look up everybody, you can see Renee is smile. She knows that we can do this. We these are our kids. This is Intersectionality 101. And if we don't embrace them, if we don't take responsibility, how, 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 do, we, how, do, we, how do we possibly celebrate the alleged tipping point in marriage equality, the fight for marriage equality, when there are kids fighting for their lives? So, the book, or maybe the chapter, about what we, Australia, Tracy, Julia, all of us in this room will do, won't be called Forcing the Spring. It will be called Forcing the Issue. And oh, by the way, Tracy, to just to give you an idea of just how much Nan Schaefer loves and respects you, and how important you are to her, she never took me to the Golden Island. <laughs>
he's looking for a book for sale for and the battery goes to Australia. So highest bidders, there's three books. And uh, I'm hoping Owen and Owen, my co-writer, is here um, yeah, right to here. sign it as well. Excellent. So Owen and I will sign it and we'll get mine. Okay. Okay, well. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I can live up to what Nan and Karen just did. I met Nan on the soccer fields. I met Peggy Garner, who came here on the softball field. So you come to our lesbianism very honestly. Uh, thank you to Australia. This is a really terrific honor. And, and when I met with Michelle Clark, and who used to deliver papers for me many years ago, um, I, I said I, I couldn't think of two better people than Vernita and Julio. And of course, Vernita was still with us at that point. Um, and so she knew about this award before she passed away. Um, I want to thank my partner, Jean, who we just celebrated our 20th anniversary. And all my friends who came here from all over the city and all over the country um, to, to, to be here tonight. Um, it was 30 years ago this month that I graduated from Drake University, and I had to make a decision. Um, is it going to be in mainstream journalism like my stepfather, Steve, at the Tribune, or alternative journalism like my mother, Joy Darrow, at the Chicago Defender? And I, I think the path was chosen for me when I knew I couldn't be openly gay and, and be in mainstream journalism. So I, I chose Gay Life newspaper, and it, it chose me. And, and um, I can't even believe it's been 30 years since my first uh, gay press byline. Um, but I, it, was, it has been an incredible journey. And the only way I got through this wicked, wicked community, wicked, <laughs> uh, it, it is wicked. And I would, I would warn the youth that it, is, it, it, it will never be an easy path. But it's because, it's because of people who, in this room, many of them in this room, were my cheerleaders, even when people, you know, they helped get the knife out of my back. Um, they, they supported me when I had the craziest of dreams, um, really just absolutely crazy possibilities that um, could not have happened without their financial and their time support, in many cases time being much more valuable. Um, and how we thrive inside and outside our community um, is it's probably the most difficult thing I've, I've seen happen over the years. We have lost so many valuable brains in this community because we pushed them out, because they didn't agree. Um, and they leave town even, you know, with people have left town just to, because they were so burned by this community. So to, have, you know, those of us who have been here since the 80s know that and, and know that legacy that we're here representing today are people like Danny Sotomayor and Dr. Ron Sable and all these people who could not be here. owe them to continue past and through that burnout stage. Um, and so I always feel like that obligation is there, but it's it's an honor, right? I still get to write. I still get to be here, even, even in the bad times. Um, I think I'm still as driven as I was in 1984. I'm definitely still as short. As I <laughs> um, but I think what drives me, as Nancy and Karen said, this is not about awards. It really is about, for me anyway, amplifying the voices that never get heard. And if you go back, and I go back sometimes now, I get a chance to look through our papers from the 1980s and 90s, and, and um, there were so many incredible people that did the work that nobody else was really giving them that voice. And there were many people, of course, we couldn't cover, but that, that's still our goal today. Um, so my hope right now, what do I hope for this community right now, now that we're sort of past marriage, at least in Illinois, um, we got that off the table. Let's get it stuck in the air out of the room. Um, it's it's gone. It, we we hopefully have that. Um, and we've got lots of complex issues ahead of us. We've got immigration issues. We've got poverty issues. We've got a whole lot of things. But for me, my personal passion right now is not just passing on our history. And we have to figure out tricky and clever ways to do that since they're not taught in school. So we have to figure out a way to make it interesting. Um, but it's, it's the issue of LGBT homelessness and joblessness. We're gonna, we held that summit a couple weeks ago, Kim Hunt, Bond, a bunch of amazing, amazing youth and, and adults that worked on that. Um, we're gonna have the report out in a few weeks. So your action item from tonight is to read the report. Um, I can't be proposed, but I will try to be limited. Um, and we will have that detailed report out, and I want people in here to think about adopting things on that list. 
Some of them are very simple, low cost, low time. Some will be very high cost a lot of time. I know that the center hosted in, in Heartland Alliance, for example, are doing a major complex. But there's a lot of things that are also small things that you can adopt. Um, final thing I want to say is um, I, want to, I want to thank my mother. Um, she died in 1996 at the age of 63. I'm 51. I think of that a lot. Um, she instilled in me the passion to matter in this world. She mattered. She mattered to us. She mattered to a, a larger community. And I've always felt like we're here so briefly. I covered people when I was 21 and started in this. I was covering people who were 22 who were dying. Um, you have this moment, this brief moment, whether it's 100 years or 20 years, to matter. So what I want to say is let's all continue to matter to our community and to our next generation.